everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV here with an MPG 2700. This is the sole toy hauler member of their family, which is funny because when you hear a name like MPG, it kind of sounds like a toy hauler brand, doesn't it? They always have these like motocross extreme kind of names. What's funny, a little history lesson, MPG actually began basically as an R-Pod clone and there was some lawsuits that were involved and over time it evolved into obviously something very different. But this thing right here, it's an interesting combination of features. A lot of times when you think of a brand like MPG that is really, you know, their, their claim to fame as being um, really smart on features to keep an aggressive price, but also they tend to be pretty lightweight. That doesn't sound like something that would maybe make a good toy hauler, but the funny thing about MPG is they tend to have really heavy axle ratings and really high cargo ratings, and that, actually does weirdly translate into an effective combination of features to make a toy hauler. There's a lot of these rear ramper campers that have uh, very little in the way of cargo capacity. That is not the case on this one. You will actually be able to use it and load it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be giant stuff. Like it's it's not a full like momentum valor size toy hauler. It's, it's in that kind of crossover camper kind of family. I call them ramper campers, but it is it provides a long loading space so if you have like like kayaks like not everything has to be about side by side atvs or what if you're just looking for a couple's living room experience with a patio that's kind of where one of these can come in now to be fair it doesn't have any sort of like three seasons wall or anything like that on the back so at night you're probably going to have to close that patio up otherwise you're going to get you know just absolutely marauded by mosquitoes mosquito rotters. I don't know. There's something there. I'll figure that out. That'll be a new nerdism the next time we put this video together. For now, let's slide inside there and see what she has to offer. And You know, this one, it feels, I don't know why, a little more of a focus on the living room than the, the hauler function to me, maybe just because that's the first way that I saw it. We're going to close it up for road mode, see the slide closed in a minute. And for navigational purposes, being able to walk through the RV more easily, I did pull that table out of the way because it's like it's a it's a push pull it's an up down it's a good bad whatever you want to call it it's black and it's white it's wrong and it's right uh it's a pedestal style table which makes it very sturdy if somebody bumps it it doesn't tend to knock your kool-aid flying everywhere but it also makes it kind of not as easy you got to do a butt scoop boogie or a luke knee walker across those sofas to get past it if it's in the up position so you almost kind of want to decide how you're gonna use this thing uh you know a little bit of a decision making process sort of required there um moving forward here it has a kitchen slide which uh you know obviously will come into the loading space a little bit that's also why the tie downs are not necessarily centered in the floor the tie downs are centered in the loading zone and we'll get to see that in a little bit here i just kind of want to give you a bit of an overview first something i'm going to give them credit for this style of layout does provide some pretty decent, uh, you know, counter capacity considering, you know, the overall size and function of the RV. Up top, we've got our centralized air conditioner. You can uh, get this with 50 amp service and slap a second one of those in there. And you're going to see me kind of demonstrate this a few times, but like, what if it's a rainy day and you don't want to sit here, you know, at one of these rear benches and 90 degree neck crank your, your head around for entertainment? Well, the good news is you've got these floating barrel swivel chairs and you can basically set this thing up like a direct facing living room if you need to. Or you can just kind of have them floating around doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, just kind of whatever works for you, you know. Another thing that's cool about this camper, it provides just some awesome campsite window coverage just all the way around and something that's easy to miss and it's one of the reasons i i've started adopting the uh the habit of sitting down and looking around from the seats in my videos because being taller i don't always see under the overhead cabinets and uh these the the cabinets that are above the rear dining area those um will have a uh you know set of dedicated household outlets these right here have households and USBs. So, you know, you are getting kind of a, uh, a variety of different plugs and things there. Now, as long as we're looking over here, I'm going to go ahead and keep on, keep it on and pivot around right here. Um, those uh, swivel barrel rocking chairs right there, I've always really liked them. I've always found them comfortable. They're lightweight. If my chicken arms can wrestle these things around, they obviously can't be uh, all that difficult. But 
hey, maybe that's not what you're looking for in your camping experience. I can see someone who's of a, a, a more fuller stature feeling like they're they're kind of pinched inside of that. So, you know, I think there's different strokes, different folks kind of thing. Just because it's my way, it's it doesn't mean it's that or the highway necessarily. The nice thing, though, when this opens up, like you don't have an island eating up a lot of the, uh, the, the move through walking space. It just has a nice, big, open design here. Now, to, to kind of demonstrate for you, and, and real quick note, because they standardize these overhead cabinets and because this is not an extra tall camper, there is absolutely no allowance for like a, uh, a Happy Jack bed lift system or uh, anything like that in here. But to kind of show you the way the dining works on this, getting that all set back up and getting that chair out of the way, one of the things to kind of also consider here is the fact that, you know, if you have the table set and you want to, you know, move it, like you have to totally... Uh, you know, take everything off the table. Now, these are a pair of rollover sofas, and they don't quite kiss in the middle, so it doesn't exactly form one big giant mega bed. I know some folks like that, and some folks don't. Some folks like the separation. I don't know which camp you fall into, but I just want to let you know what it is and what a taint, basically, uh, so that you can just be in the best, most educated decision-making position process, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one thing I will tell you, when you roll that over into sleeper mode, like you see these extra little uh, support legs that kind of drop down here. That is a, uh, a thing that you want to remember to drop down on the rollover sofa portion as well. Otherwise, that side of the sofa isn't exactly properly supported. It's not probably going to be a problem, but it's not ideal and it's easy to fix. Now, kind of like I've sort of demonstrated there, if you want to, just kind of chill out on the patio on like a spring or fall day with the weather super pleasant, just get all the fresh air in the world. Again, these chairs are perfectly portable. Nothing says that's where you have to leave them right there. And obviously we're indoor in our display right here, but where I think these would be so cool is if you find yourself in a position where, you know, you, you've got just some amazing kind of views like, you know, mountain backdrop, a lake or something like that. That's where I think these could be really, really nice. Um, well, as long as we're pointing back up at it, let's take a look at that storage up there. And again, they did include all the kind of maximum overhead cabinet space that they possibly could, which I think was a really handy, smart decision. Um, the, the kitchen space, you know, you've got a big 12-volt compressor fridge. You've got some big drawers. One of the neat things here, though, a lot of manufacturers are like getting rid of ovens. This kept the oven and the microwave and the stovetop, but the oven's also an air fryer. So if you want to cook some stuff in a hurry, that is a really cool feature to have right here. Uh, and once again, it is worth noting the countertop space in this is not terrible. Um, what you might consider doing is swapping out the pedestal style legs on the, uh, the dining table and putting a set of floating legs on it. First of all, I'm a big fan of doing that um, regardless. But the, uh, the thing that that could allow you to do is pull that table forward. Instead of being back here between the benches, you could pull that table forward and use it like, and I mean, basically a kitchen island or a countertop extension or something like that. So there are some uh, opportunities there. Now, I mentioned how those chairs are floating. Speaking of pulling something forward, on a rainy day, if you have to close that patio and you're stuck inside, that's where these floating chairs come in real, real handy. Because now, suddenly, we have this interesting um, kind of like rear dining, but you also have like a set of recliners facing straight at the TV right here if you want it to. I'm not saying it's ideal because, yeah, obviously the left chair is a little bit in the way of the fridge. You could slide it to the right a little bit if you want to do the cha-cha slide with that thing. But you have options. You have opportunities. Like the chairs, most people are going to display them over here against the window. So I think a lot of people naturally assume that's where the, the chairs have to go. And that's not the case at all. Ooh, hold on. I just discovered something I wasn't expecting. This is not some big, super tall mega hauler. Now, with my shoes on from floor to peach fuzz, I'm probably about 6'2". And that's close. And don't get me wrong, like, my, my instinct is to, like, retract my neck like a turtle. But I actually was very pleasantly surprised just now. I was able to walk straight in and out of that thing. Now, one thing I do want to mention, this does not have any kind of dovetail. So if you are trying to load something that hugs really low to the ground, the angle of attack, the transition angle, might be a little bit of aggressive uh, on that, but I've got a little bit of a workaround for you. A little pro tip. If you do feel your loading angle is a little bit too steep, go over to your power tongue jack and 
lift the nose of this thing up as far as you can because what that will do is lower the tail of the RV and soften that angle of attack to make loading a little bit easier. Now that does mean you're loading on an incline. So when you get to where you wanna be, you're gonna have to grab the brakes and hit your parking brake real quick. But I mean, it's either that or you rip the pipes off your bike maybe. And that uh, not what well, would suck, that would not be good. Sorry for jumping around, but I, I thought that was a timely uh, moment to discuss that little thing. Moving forward here into our bathroom. This bathroom has become a very common design. I mean, you're finding it in trailers and fifth wheels and for good reason. It's probably one of the most efficient, effective bathroom layouts that you run into. I'm not a super fan of open face storage, but some rolled up towels should probably hold themselves in there. And I can give it a pass because they at least did give us some enclosure there for the medicine cabinet and the stuff below the sink. Now the shower has an aggressive step up because the shower pan has a heat duct running through it. So that's how they were able to maintain the, uh, you know, no floor ducts or anything like that in the, uh, in the camper for easy cleaning. But at a cost, it does mean that you step up a little taller into the shower. Thankfully, with the skylight, I was pretty much fine. And there's good space around that toilet. Um, again, because this bathroom is, I don't want to say done to death, but we'll, we'll just say very common and very popular. Um, we're, uh, I think we're just going to keep on moving on because there's more to talk about up here in the bedroom. This is a 72 by 80 factory king bed. And if you're really looking, unlike a lot of RV king beds, the, the base under the bed it absolutely comes right out to the edge of the bed. I personally think it may be a smart idea if they, this this wooden piece down here, if they shrunk that down width-wise, but they kept the wider decking. I will say too, if a company's gonna cut a corner, I'd like it if they actually cut that corner right there because I can't tell you how many times I have gouged and dug up my legs on these. Like, if you own an RV and you've gone through it a couple times, you know what I'm talking about, but you're in one RV. I'm in a lot of RVs. And I can't tell you, like when I batch record a bunch of stuff, I come home, I got I got beat up shins like crazy, like crazy, crazy. You can option a second air into these, by the way. It will um, replace that ceiling vent up there. But what's kind of nice is it is a second centrally ducted air. So you can stay pretty darn comfortable, uh, which is, I, I think, a handy little thing here. And we're going to get all this open and show you all the details. But to give you the layout, around the corner, You've got some serious dresser space and an additional closet up there next to that little uh, TV prep area. I'll be shocked if many people throw a TV up there, but theoretically you could. Just make sure you get yourself some kind of swing arm mount. Um, thankfully, compared to what they were doing a couple years ago, they shrunk that overhead shelf back because it was a concussionator. Uh, I, I demoed that a few times and it frankly sucked. Um, the, uh, I, I do my own stunts. There's also these little phone pocket stands. And, uh, in a second here, you're going to see there are some household and USB outlets, uh, on both sides of it. You've also got, uh, cross breeze windows on both sides of the bed. But one of the things when you go to the king bed, it gets awful tight in here. Well, they came up with a solution and I call it the glide of bed. Although I think they just call it their king bed slide anyway. But the goal behind this is in a private enclosed bedroom like this, you can slide the bed off to the side and have a place where you can actually stand in the bedroom and get dressed, which is kind of nice. That's not something you always have the opportunity to do in a lot of king bed bedrooms. That's a fairly rare thing, actually. The uh, other thing here is uh, uh, obviously around the corner, we've got that extra hanging storage, but when the bed slides, it can make it a little bit easier to kind of get around the bed to uh, especially get your like your fitted sheets and everything hooked up at the top there. Um, there's there's two ways of fighting fitted sheets, and I will tell you, one is definitely more enjoyable than the other. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. Now, last little step here before we hop outside, I want to take a look at this in road mode. One of the things that you're going to need to do is say, move, chair, get out the way. I mean, it's ludicrous. But keep in mind when you do this, like this is kind of where the chairs, you, you put them uh, back to back like a lethal weapon, you know, VHS cover and you strap them down in place. It, the camper does include a strap to do that, thankfully. But nothing says you necessarily have to bring these. So if you want to keep those totally out of the way, you can. Another place that you could stuff them, basically, is over here around the corner, kind of tucked in beside the slide instead of in the way of the loading zone. 
And when you do that, you got to kind of put them back to front, which looks like they're either in some kind of furniture conga line or they're like <laughs> taking a prom photo. <laughs> but when you do that, it makes more sense to me because now you have this big, wide open, unobstructed loading area. But exactly how big? Well, I managed to plan ahead and brought a handy little laser measure here today. God, that still spooks me, but I know I fit to get some quick measurements for you. But the thing is, um, like you're like, well, will a Honda such and such fit? I, I don't know. Get the measurements on your Honda such and such, call our team, and they can hand measure hard against the unit to verify. In the meantime, I'm going to try to get you some basic general specs to see if it might be in the neighborhood. All right, back of the ramp to that cabinet, 13 feet, four inches. But remember, you also need to subtract a few inches to allow for that patio ramp that's going to be on the deck to fold up. So to be safe, subtract about six to nine inches from that. From the wall to the slide, you got in the neighborhood of five feet. And the inside width between these uh, roll-up benches when they're folded up is about six feet to six feet, three inches, depending on whether or not you're including little legs that fold down. And from the floor to the underside of these cabinets, not including that little curvature that hangs down, it's about five feet. So if you appreciate seeing road mode, getting extra handy little specs here, and hopefully I remember to do this more often, but it's an extra thing I got to carry around with me and I already carry enough stuff with me. I might forget from time to time. If you appreciate it, hit that subscribe button and let me know if this was useful or if it was just annoying. All right, so first taking a look at the uh, the towing specs and weights and measures here. I was, for some reason, I was expecting this to be like 35, 36 feet. I was very pleasantly surprised to find it's basically 32 feet. 31 feet, 11 inches, and 32 feet, okay. Um, that, I, I figured it was going to be bigger than that. And maybe it's just because the ramp patio is down, so it's skewing my perception of the length. But it really felt like it was going to be bigger. And I don't try to judge length based on model numbers because... Man, I've seen, I mean, they, they call this a 2700, but it's 32 feet tip to tail. It's got roughly a 27 foot box is how they come up with that. Let's do some good news, bad news. Good news. We got this cool rear patio kind of thing. Bad news, uh, near as I can determine, there's no factory bug screen of any variety provided on this thing. Now, that's not necessarily a major ordeal. Um, we could easily get one of those magnetic uh tent screen walls that just because it's got a, a a full steel uh you know framework around that ramp patio to support everything getting one of those magnet jobs you can just pop up there that would work now to my knowledge no supplier offers a three seasons wall that fits this so it's neither available from the factory nor after market um you have to go wider and taller to kind of accomplish that you will find four corner uh not well of course you find four corner stabilizers but four corner power stabilizers on these and i do really like how this one uh these are all the way at the back of the rv to provide extra stability while you're loading now i've never really run into this problem in a travel trailer but um, in my uh, past, I've also represented and, and you know, sold uh, some cargo trailers. And some of those things, if they're not hitched up to the vehicle and you uh, uh, start loading stuff in the back of it, I've popped a wheelie in a cargo trailer before. That was quite the experience, I will tell you. Now, the layer below the fiberglass is Asdell. The inside wall layer is Luan. Um, you've also got really good patio awning coverage on this. And look at the campsite window coverage front to back to front again uh you've got you've got some serious coverage going on right there now this vertical rectangular jabo right there that is a uh, a two-way air vent so if you're loading something in this that has exhaust and a combustion engine you don't want that sitting in your rv and stanking the place up so you can uh open that two-way air vent when you're going down the road to help exhaust that out and kind of refresh the air uh in transit um you're not going to want to do that in driving rain uh i I've never mentioned that on camera before. Um, and the only reason I did is, I guess it, it just kind of, I, I figured it sort of went without saying. And then uh, recently here, somebody brought a uh, used RV to us that they thought had a um, major leak and we needed to uh, do some service work to check it out. Turns out there was nothing wrong with it. They just happened to be towing it in the rain with that two-way air vent open. Um, and uh, unfortunately caused some pretty serious water damage in their RV. So maybe that's something I need to talk about more often. I don't know. We are prepped and ready for tire pressure monitor. And I'm noticing outside TV hookups over here, which is cool. But you are going to have to keep this baggage door wide open to be able to utilize those. Now, 
Uh, let's talk some construction here. You've got, obviously, see the aluminum framework under the bed. A lot of people, uh, like I'll mention that an RV has an aluminum structure, but then they see a wood skeleton under the bed and they call me a liar. Uh, a bed deck is not structure, that's furniture, that's a different thing, but they do aluminum frame their bed decking here. They also aluminum frame and laminate their walls. They aluminum frame their roof, but do have a 3 8 wood decking on top for snow load and walkability, but they have uh, a, a completely wood constructed floor so that they don't end up with any sort of squishy soft spots uh, over time. It's a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. One last quick little note for you here. I just did an eyeball double check. It does have a single sewer outlet. It's just, we got it covered up with a whole bunch of show materials here. So it's not something you can really see, but it is one singular crap cap. Ma, Maquitos? No, that sounds, that either sounds like something like an appetizer or a drink or a drink you get with an appetizer. Sorry, I'm still stuck on the mosquito marauder thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit rambling. Check the link in the video description if you want to see where we have one of these parked and what we're asking on a given day. Because remember, like I've, you've seen pricing banners all over at this display at this RV show. That is the price here at this show, and I have confirmed that we had some special incentives granted to us by the factory to help achieve that pricing. That is probably not the normal everyday pricing, but you will be able to find our normal everyday pricing right on our website, one click away, whether you watch this our, uh, video a day from now or a year from now uh, when it posts or whatever. When you're ready, we're ready. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.